So my brother's looking to buy a house at the moment. And the second he found one that he actually wanted to buy, the first question he asked me was, how do I know how much to offer? I wanna talk a little bit about this today. Can I just say, as a real estate agent, we're paid to represent the seller, but just once, just once, just once, I'd like to help the buyer. I feel like a major reason why people don't like real estate agents is because there's an inherent feeling, inherent? Inherent? Dion, is that right, inherent? Anyway, there's a feeling that we're not on your team, which I guess is technically true. But today I am. So what should you do? Should you offer below what the agent's are asking and haggle? Should you maybe wait for other buyers to make the offers first and see where they're offering and try and gauge it from that? Should you watch the weather forecast and see whether the gods are with you? I don't know what I meant by that either. Seriously though, before you make offers on anything and try and work out how much to offer, the first thing you need to do, and if you're anything like my brother, you will not want to do it. But you need to do it and that's go through absolutely everything that's on the market. Everything that is comparable, even if it's in a different location, if it's got the same amount of bedrooms, same amount of bathrooms, same type of property, you need to go through that property. The reason you need to do this is when you've actually walked through a property, you've seen what it was like inside, you've seen the location, and then, and then, you've actually seen it sell. Then you can accurately compare it once you've found a property that you actually want to buy. The last thing you want to do is actually be relying on like tiny little pictures on the internet trying to give you a gauge of what the location was like, how big it was inside. You won't know by looking at the internet whether or not the train line is right behind, whether it has power lines hanging over the top of the property and all of these things. What you're trying to gauge is not that it's sold for X, but why it's sold for X. When I bought in Geelong, I actually looked at heaps of units until I found a nice two bedroom unit that had been sitting on the market for a number of months and it was actually priced correctly. The only reason it hadn't sold is because the tenants had a mountain of kids toys that were scattered throughout the house. And normal people walking through an open house aren't used to seeing homes for sale in that condition, which makes it really hard for them to actually see the opportunity that's there. Not only that, but the tenant had a lease in place that was fixed, so anyone that wanted to move in and actually live in the property had to wait until that expired, which basically knocks anyone out that doesn't want to take on a tenancy prior to moving into their first home. By the time I actually found the unit, I knew what everything else was selling for. So when I found this one, I was able to make an offer on the spot. And not only that, but the actual unit that I bought was on the corner of two streets. So it had ended up having its own driveway. A lot of unit complexes will have a shared driveway, which means body corporate, which is uh, more fees per year again. So this was actually a better property. I knew exactly how much to pay for it. So I got it cheaper than what the other units were going for that are in those body corporates. So you're getting a better rental return, a better property at a lower price by knowing exactly what you're doing. At the end of the day, by having been through all the other units, you know what pricing is doing in the area and you can make an informed decision when you do find one. If you see that the agents overpriced the property, you know to offer less. On the other side, if you know the agent's actually priced it right or it's underpriced, you may want to grab that property at that price before anyone else sees it. Before you panic, I filmed this over three days. So although I was wearing three different jackets, I did not change my outfit that many times, or did I? If this video helped you out, maybe consider subscribing. It does make my day, and I'll see you on the next video.